Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. Today we are driving a super special M3 lightweight. Well, this is the baddest E36 I've ever driven. We are going to be showcasing this with four other lightweights, a total of five. Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. Today we're in EAG Super Secret Warehouse number one and we're with seven E36 M3 lightweights. This has to be a record or at least tying a record for a number of lightweights in a video on the internet. And uh, we're gonna focus on these five lightweights here and the one enthusiast that's bought all five of them from us in the last 90 days. Another record, I'm sure. Uh, we've partnered with this enthusiast and, and he's going to preserve and love these cars. He's gonna drive them, he's gonna get them out, he's gonna share them with others, which we're very, very excited about. Uh, but we've also partnered with him. He, he owns a coating company, a nanographene based product that we're quite excited to align with. It's not yet here in the United States. It's just rolling out. Uh, we are the first uh, on this side of the Mississippi for uh, uh, this product. And it's something that we've been playing with for several months and learning more about and, and having used coatings of, of all different natures, ceramic, synthetic, etc., for going on a decade. Uh, we're always able to judge the quality of our own work when these cars come back. We can test our worksmanship. We can check our product. We can check uh, the durability and survivorship of those products. And, and this is going to be a really excited, exciting one, knowing that it's going to offer a, a high, high level of protection, even more so than what we've used in the past. And it's going to help preserve these cars that much more. And, and they're only original once. At the end of the day, we are a preservation-based company and keeping them original as best as we can and protecting them, setting them up for success. That's our job. That's our responsibility. That's our charge. That's what we commit to every enthusiast when they reach out and say, hey, I've got something special. I want to keep it in a great home. Uh, let's have a conversation about value. What, uh, what, what, what's this look like? And, and we do our best to keep them in the best homes. And, and I'm very excited to keep all five of these cars in this new home. Uh, it's definitely a cool story to tell. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. I hope you're liking these videos. If you are, do hit that like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button as well. A lot of cool stuff coming up. We've got a really cool car in the pipeline. I don't think I've ever seen it on YouTube. Uh, it's not a natural car to the United States. It's coming in from abroad. It's currently going through all of the technical stuff we'll get into uh, when uh, the car is here. It's coming quite soon. I'm very excited. I can't wait. Uh, do uh, also stay tuned towards the end of this video. We're going to jump in that lightweight at the end there. It's got a hot Euro PTG installed Group N spec uh, motor that uh, six speed, all kinds of just wicked go fast stuff. We're going to go out and drive that car the way it was meant to be. A very, very uh, fun video to make and one that I uh, hope you enjoy that as well. So without further ado, let's take a lap around these lightweights uh, and uh, have some fun. The storyline with the E36 M3 lightweight program begins with Mr. Eric Wensberg, the acting M brand director uh, throughout the late 80s and into the 90s, was approached by lots of private race team owners and said, hey, you know, let's build a spec car. We want a uh, out of the box race car. Let's compete and, and run this new model M3 to our market. And we need, we need something uh, kind of like that M3 GT that you're running there in Europe. Uh, what, can we, what can we do to, to accomplish that? And, and BMW uh, uh, certainly uh, was not exactly thrilled with the idea, but Wensberg persevered no different than he did in bringing the E36 M3 to platform to our market, which was a feat unto itself. And certainly probably one of the most notable points of BMW M history in the United States and knowing that the E36 M3 sales volume and the amount of enthusiasts that the E36 platform uh, has touched over the years uh, is really what's built the, the lion's share of the M enthusiasts that today st still stand as the largest market. North America is the largest sales market for BMW M and I'm sure that the uh, E36 M3 has as much, if not the most, to do with that fact surviving today. So. Lightweight that people can take right out to the Firebox series and run competitively. They did everything possible. They wanted to do it. They said, this is great, Mr. Wentzberg, lovely idea. We'll have them for you in January or February at the latest. Oh, everything's great. Next thing I know, they're calling me saying, well, there's been a little problem. The car's going to cost more expensive than you thought. And they said, why are we taking things out? We're not putting things in. They said, oh, that's not the way it works. It gets more expensive. So, okay, this is the, the next thing I know, they're producing them in October of the next year. And I'm like, not only is the racing season all over, but the model year is over. You're giving me a car with no air conditioning, no radio, and no sound deadening, and it's a model year old. And they said, oh, well, that's your challenge, Mr. Wentzberg. This is, this, is, this is your project. 
Uh, thank you very little. Thank you. Uh, I joke to Eric Keller, who's in the room tonight. There he is. He sold, resold 30 or 40 of them. I said, the only one that made any money on the lightweight is this yeah. guy right here. <laughs> but God bless you for that. And having said that, it was a noble project that once again almost cost me my job. Okay, so uh, thank you to Mr. Wensberg for building an M3 lightweight and uh, giving us the opportunity to experience these cars here in our, our uh, market. Uh, we certainly love them, no question. Uh, but BMW North America did uh, go ahead and uh, assimilate a really great group of drivers and they were driving cars that looked very, very similar to this. This is a full PTG wide body, uh, just less than 10 of these wide body uh, M3s were built. And this is uh, very similar to what you would see running around uh, with the, the BMW livery and it would have a Euro motor, very similar to what you'd find in the GT. Three liter, 295 horse would be the standard GT output, uh, 240 horse on the standard S50 that these cars left the factory with. And, and speaking of factory, I guess we should talk about this one just briefly to give you kind of a baseline and uh, talk about what the, the lightweight program is. It's a 200 and change less uh, weight car that uh, benefit from a lot of the weight reduction and, and from factory as this car is just 47 miles from new is exactly how it left the factory. They did not have the spoiler uh, high rise installed. They did have the flags. They did have uh, the front spoilers installed, but that's uh, about it relative to the GT kit. The, the GT parts, frankly, for this car actually have never been installed nor have they ever been unwrapped. They're all still in their cellophane and there's the dual pan uh, dual pump oil pan, uh, the motorsport brace, the X brace, the uh, two stage spoiler there with the riser blocks. Uh, those would be all the GT stuff that BMW uh, would void your warranty if you installed uh, that thousand dollar bit of kit, uh, uh, knowing that, that those things were not DOT compliant at the time. Uh, a little bit of a fun backstory there that uh, involved uh, a window sticker and Moroni and that uh, had uh, the GT stuff on the original first part of the, the lightweight production run. Uh, these were built 126 total and that production run mainly was in August, September and October of 1995. They missed uh, the whole first 95 racing season on the model year launch of these cars, a uh, host of different reasons why. But uh, they came out uh, of the gates swinging because in 1996, BMW did win the championship uh, uh, within, uh, this in the GTS uh, 2 class, I believe. And in 97, Bill Oberlin won the driver's championship and in the GTS 3 category, again, man, another manufacturer's championship. So the first, the second, and then third year, 1998, again, another manufacturer's championship won, uh, and that was in the GT3 class, I believe. So it was a well-campaigned and, and well-respected and formidable car. It's a, a racing uh, uh, endeavor success, I think most would say, especially the E36 platform overall with a lot of the touring in the, the early days with the S14 still running and the E36 chassis, but that's not uh, this video. Uh, but um, I'm excited to announce the relationship and partnering with Art to Shine and Enthusiast Auto, both as a authorized installer and soon to be distributor of these products it is a fantastic coating that we have applied to the very first of the lightweights to be prepared to arrive at EAG Super Secret Warehouse number one. The other four lightweights will get the same process applied by the owner himself when uh, the uh, opportunity and time comes. There's a certain level of bonding one gets, of course, when you're uh, uh, in the garage with your own beloved car. But I, I have to say that the amount of, um, just the, the, the soft nature, I mean, all the coatings are great. They all are going to help. But this is a super soft, super slippery um, uh, coating that I have to say is going to um, be a very, very, very hard one to beat. And the Nano Graphene is a uh, super slippery product that uh, I'm sure is going to take a lot of other manufacturers many, many trial and error opportunities to, to get right. And I think one of the coolest things about this product is the competitive advantage they have being that they've been working on this for many, many years. And this is actually the second version uh, of their uh, Nano Graphene uh, paint coating. And I have to say that uh, so far the results are um, nothing better, nothing short of the best that we've seen. Thus, uh, you know, the commitment to, to jump in uh, with 
them and, and uh, align our, our two brands known for quality. I'm very excited to, to offer that uh, as part of the EAG's Rejuve program that will be able to be applied to your EAG BMW when you're ready to take delivery and, and all of the things that we can do after the fact. To make that car your own is something that uh, uh, many of our clients will take advantage of prior to their car arriving to their new stable and knowing that they want to get it right out the box exactly the way that they want to use and enjoy and have a lot of fun with and, and uh, being able to do that with our uh, name and brand behind it is something we're very proud of and, and very excited to bring this new product to, to many of other uh, enthusiast clients over the coming weeks, months and years. Um, I think that will bring us into the individual stories and, and maybe we should talk about the, the lightweight tech stuff of what does make that lightweight. And uh, So first off, they're, they're going to have the aluminum doors from the GT. It's going to be most easily identified with these uh, little, uh, uh, I guess, indentations here on the top of the door. Uh, we've got a fair amount of weight savings there. Uh, we're going to have another fair amount of weight savings given that all of the sound deadening material is not going to be installed, nor a radio, nor air conditioning, nor a sunroof. And we're going to have these cloth sport seats that are, of course, manual. Again, more weight savings throughout. All the interior trim uh, replaced with carbon fiber. Not a whole lot of weight savings there, but it looks really cool. And carbon fiber really wasn't into its own just yet in the industry. Uh, you'd see a lot more carbon fiber, say, on a um, you know, McLaren F1, which uh, would be obviously a pure uh, uh, a correct sister car also raced by a lot of those uh, guys driving uh, the, the E36 at the time, uh, Bill Oberlin being one of them, uh, Johnny Chicago being another. Uh, he, I think, won in Europe in the GT uh, prior to the lightweight, which gave BMW, I'm sure, some momentum to say, hey, we can be competitive, and they were racing uh, FIA um, GT2, I believe. So uh, the other lightweight accoutrement, you're not going to see any sound insulation uh, or uh, uh, heat insulation on the hoods. Uh, you're not going to see uh, any, uh, well, the, again, the sound deadening under the carpets and things. That's really, I'm sure, a lot of the weight savings comes from. Uh, there's not going to be a tool kit installed. They've got a little delete kit uh, installed there. And uh, uh, this in, on lightweight number one, technically, and we'll come back to what that means. Uh, we've got some of those racing driver signatures even. Uh, David Donahue, Bill Oberlin, uh, Pete Halsmer, um, Boris said just to name a few. And uh, these two cars were the first two that we sold this enthusiast and did so as a pair. Uh, both of these cars EAG originally acquired from the original owner uh, in 2014. Two different guys. This car came from, I believe, Pennsylvania, uh, where this car came from Florida. The, the drivers were, I guess, um, at uh, either Sebring or probably Daytona, probably Sebring, um, in uh, I think 97 is when uh, those uh, guys just uh, signed that car. Pretty cool. Wensberg told me the story and, and helped me decipher some of the signatures that I couldn't uh, make out. But So um, this enthusiast we meet, he is interested in building a portfolio, building a collection. We start our relationship by having a conversation, as, as all good relationships with clients in any business do. And I understand what his goals are. And we end up uh, uh, deciding on an E46 M3, of all things, an Alpine White example that uh, we then put together kind of as a package deal with this lightweight that had just came in uh, is it was not yet on the market he kind of got a front seat on it and uh, said well are there any other lightweights available and I said well I got another lightweight but it's not here for sale it's it's one that we sold about the same time as the other it's here for the EAG rejuve refresher round one uh, uh, six years removed from, uh, five and a half years removed from going through the program uh, the owner of this car sent it up from Maryland and said hey go through it you know the headliners started to fall I know that's an E36 thing the door panels got a little bit of a couple waves to them. I know that's an E36 thing. Go ahead and let's just uh, time future proof this car one more time for me uh, so it's good to go. Well, I uh, called him up uh, per the request of this new uh, EAG enthusiast lightweight client and said, hey, I've got a guy that's interested in, in, in buying the car. Would you be interested in selling? Something that we don't really do um, solicit our uh, owners all that often. They can probably count on two hands total how many times we've done that over the years. And uh, it turns out it was kind of the right time and the right opportunity. He had his eyes on some other cars and, and five, six years uh, even um, is, is a long time for a lot of our clients, especially this particular one. So it just was kind of a perfect opportunity to get into that next enthusiast car, check that next bucket list box. Uh, a couple, uh, oh, two weeks or so goes by and then this client calls me back up and says, hey, do you, do you know of any other lightweights? I'm like, well, man, you just got two of them. I mean, that's, that's kind of like a big thing. That's a record. He's like, I know, but I, I, I think they're really special cars and, and I, I just, I love the story. Um, you know, I, I'd love to be able to show them uh, and have, uh, when I come back to the States, I'm moving back here relatively soon. I've been in, in Asia for many years getting these businesses off the ground and um, working super, super hard and, and really want to pair with you guys to, to build my, my collection, something, something uh, we've done 
done with quite a few enthusiasts over the years and, and something we're very proud and honored to be able to do and have that trust and commitment. And then so uh, I said, well, um, let, me, let me go to work and let's uh, talk to another guy. Uh, we bought this uh, one to 2016. Let me see if they're interested in, and uh, uh, spend a little bit of time. Let's, let's see if they're interested in, in checking another box somewhere else. And it turns out uh, that's exactly what they were thinking. And, and uh, we did have uh, previous conversations with this owner a couple months prior, and the, that seed was planted at that time that this one might be something we would have access to if we had the right interested party. And uh, that's, again, what why relationships are very important, are knowing these things and, and understanding what everybody's goals and priorities are and how we can align and, and kind of um, just just, you know, um, connect all the dots for all of our fellow car guys that love these cars like we do and appreciate them being in, you know, just this kind of condition, you know, through and through. And that's, it's, it's really hard to find these lightweights in this type of condition because frankly, it was a homologated, you know, race car uh, effort. And, and so many of these cars did see the track and, and did go around uh, at speed and did hit walls and did have engines that failed and did have guys that, you know, uh, didn't maybe build them up or build them out right the, the way that they should have the first time and, and got to go back through and do it again. And, and uh, the fact that we've got almost 40 of these lightweights now in our revolving you know, EAG collection is, is uh, staggering and, and uh, frankly, this group of five of them represents some of the absolute very, very best ones we've ever, ever sourced in our 20 years of business. And uh, this car is no exception, having sourced it also in 2016 out of Colorado. And uh, this gentleman, uh, super, super enthusiast. This guy was certainly um, very detail oriented and he had had the car since the early 2000s, uh, even went as far as to frame the original window sticker, which I certainly can uh, get behind. Um, each of these cars has a nice big service binder as well. And, and you can see uh, it was not hard to install the radio on these cars. They did all come with the speakers um, uh, pre-installed on the front door panels. However, the uh, radios were deleted from the factory. Uh, the wiring though did remain and, and was a pretty easy plug and play if you wanted to kind of build the car to suit and make it your own. Uh, so this car now is at uh, 22,000 miles. We're at 12,000 miles. We're at 20,000 miles, 28,000 miles, and 25,000 miles, almost 26 on the PTG installed Euro uh, three liter with a six speed. Uh, this car was acquired in 2019 and we immediately sold the car to a really great client, a great friend. The MM package was immediately applied and uh, uh, no detail left uh, unturned. Uh, lots and lots of trim and, and just small little updates took place to basically uh, uh, make this car exactly what uh, he wanted it to be at a super high OCD level. Uh, I do have to get it a little cleaner since uh, I did go do that fun run video that I'm going to take you for a drive in here shortly. Uh, it was a really, really fun one to make. Um, but we've got bigger brakes to accommodate the extra go that uh, that engine's putting out. It's similar to what we'll find in the GT with the 200 95 horsepower output on the GTs. Uh, this one's probably going to be a little bit hotter than that. Uh, again, still running that three liter. I've got an Alpina steering wheel. We added the, the fire extinguisher just to, to be safe. Uh, a couple extra gauges. And uh, this car, of course, with the, uh, the six point roll cage will certainly keep the next enthusiast a bit safe -er, uh, when you're going at, at a higher speed. Uh, the aluminum doors, though, aren't as easy to shut because I don't like to slam them. Same with the hoods. One thing, too, the lightweight owners. If you shut the hood uh, quite hard, these acorn nuts uh, right here at the top uh, do pop out and, and can uh, present a little bit of a challenge. Those things are uh, certainly something to be mindful of, knowing that uh, they can touch the top of the hood right there and leave a little Audi dent. The things you own, uh, learn when you own as many of these lightweights that go through the program. Uh, remote reservoir suspension, this thing has obviously been uh, worked uh, and, and set up a bit more uh, for the driving enthusiast and it started out with the PTG installed uh, uh, engine. Uh, it then went to Illinois shortly thereafter. It really wasn't tractor or driven um, uh, in the way that it was designed by the first owner, much if, if at all. Second owner set it up for time attack and again, same thing, he didn't drive it a whole lot. It's still really low mileage, under 10,000 miles I believe. Now fast forward to, to early 2000s when the third owner, the gentleman we bought the car from uh, was the beneficiary no, after Fall Line had set the car up for time attack with the, uh, the second owner. Shout out to Fall Line, great race shop up in Illinois. Uh, the car was um, uh, you know, basically uh, stage one, then, or phase one, phase two, and then now EAG, uh, almost in a uh, more concord level, uh, brought it back to, to the, I guess, phase three, uh, knowing the mechanical integrity uh, had also been updated during our, our time with 
the car. Super great fun driving car. So all the weight gone with all the power. I mean, it's the ultimate E36, frankly, um, that uh, is, I think, um, the most special of these uh, cars and, and, and was the fifth, uh, save the best for last, I suppose. Um, certainly the one that I get the most excited about, uh, both driving and, and just the, the overall you know, uh, performance level. Uh, it's one that, frankly, we bought to keep and, and sold it to a really great friend. And now the, this uh, uh, lightweight uh, 5X owner has become just that, a great friend as well. Thus, uh, the opportunity to keep another great car in a great loving home. Uh, we just couldn't pass that up. So uh, that is a good one take, one lap uh, with the E36 M3 lightweights, all seven of them. Uh, certainly uh, looking forward to jumping behind the steering wheel of this car and taking it for a fun ride. And we're going to go do that right now. I've ever driven on. Subscribe for more. See you.